I am California of the past. I am California of the past. I am California of the past. Buen dia. I'm Paul Mora, the elder son of Frank Joseph Mora Jr. and Amelia Barbara Gomes. I've lived in San Leandro all my life, which is 70 plus years. The funny thing is, it's all been on one street, Blossom Way. In fact, it's just 23 houses on that street, and I've lived in three. It seems this is kind of funny for me to, talking from this area, to expand on the Portuguese immigration of my parents and all of my ancestors. My roots are firmly tied to Madeira or the Madeira Islands. Uh, they're part of Portugal. Both sides of my family are from Funchal, the largest city. And, but their means of getting to California were very, very different. My father, Frank Moore Jr., was born in Funchal in 1913 and was the second of four children. His father, Francisco José Mora, which also was Frank Mora in, in English, was drafted into the army in 1917 during World War I. We don't really know why they took, would draft a man with a wife and four children. But as the family has dug into, we think he was in legal problems and was sentenced by a judge. Francisco knew that he could not support his family while he was in the army, so he decided to flee to the United States. He bought a dead soldier's papers and was off to Fall River, Massachusetts as Antonio de Silva. Um, Fall River had a large uh, Portuguese population and was one of the main gateways for immigration at that time through Massachusetts. He worked for four years building roads in 1920, he heard from one of his friends, his compadre, his amigos, that his seven-year-old son, my father, had a job carrying seaweed from the ocean to the volcanic mountains because they needed to make dirt. Everything in Madeira is terraced. And um, as soon as he heard that, my, uh, my grandfather knew that he had to do something. The, the interesting thing is that since they could not read or write, this was the only way that he could find things was through the verbal news of his friends. By 1922, he brought his family to the United States. If you look closely at that picture, you'll only see three children because one of the twins was sent back because she was sick. She did not return until 1931 and had a very different name on her passport. The time away changed her very much. She was very different than her identical twin who was raised in the United States. She was very old world and my aunt, her, my aunt Pat, who was her sister, was very new world. My father was also almost sent back because on the boat there was an accident. Somebody fell on his legs and he couldn't walk. And my grandfather knew he needed a son to help him in his work. So he said, one moment, please. He took him to the side. He had a little bottle of whiskey, rubbed it on his legs. And he said, Frank, you're going to walk. And my father walked. And so he walked his way into the United States. Because my uh, grandfather could not uh, bid on the building of Massachusetts Stage Road because he could not read or write, his family moved to California in 1926. They settled on a small farm on 105th Avenue in Oakland. But what is strange with all the immigration types. My grandfather continued for the rest of his life to leave, to leave the United States, go back to Portugal, come back many, many times. Eventually, he reversed his immigration and went back to Madeira, where he lived for another 15 years and died in the 1970s. Now, my mother was a different story. She was the fourth child of five to be born born to Jose Leonard Gomes and Maria Paula Gonzalez. They came to the United States in 1904. 
My mother was born in 1916 here in the United States. Uh, my grandfather came to the United States because there was no work in Madeira, and he was sponsored by his uncle to come here for the entrance to the United States. They settled in Oakland near friends and relatives, as so many new people did. My mother, as I said before, was born in the United States in 1916. But in 1921, the reverse immigration started. Her mother took her back to Madeira to live, to care for her grandparents. They were there for a number of years. In 1928, they returned and the family moved to San Leandro and my mother enrolled in McKinley Elementary School in the sixth grade. They settled in San Leandro because many of our relatives were able to buy land. And so they all lived very close together as, as we so often do. Um, my mother was the first to graduate from high school in 1934, and she was immediately employed by the Bank of America, which saved her, her family as her father and her three brothers who had lost their employment during the Great Depression. She was the only income for the whole family. By this time, they had another child. The one driving principle of both families was that their children were to be Americans, and they were not gonna suffer the burden of poverty that had carried through both families. One sad consequences of us being Americans were we were introduced to a lot of formal Portuguese institutions, but it was deeply ingrained in us. One problem is that I'm the only one of my generation that speaks Portuguese because I had the opportunity to be raised by my grandmother during World War II, and then I was the oldest Portuguese son, and you went to work with your father at 12 at the fish market in Housewives Market, which we had a large Portuguese population. So I was able to keep up my, my language now, which is 100 years old. Just because there was little language left in the family, it doesn't mean that Portuguese traits disappeared. Heavens no, let us know.